we knew the growing danger for electric vehicle fires. We actually had just experienced one in a neighboring city that it took thousands of gallons and several hours to extinguish, and we knew it was a problem. We knew eventually we would have it here in our city. EV fires are widely thought to be difficult to extinguish. Depending on the method used, operations may require large amounts of water, producing heavily toxic smoke, and could require collecting contaminated runoff water for hours. The lithium-ion batteries involved in EV fires have also been known to come with the risk of reignition, sometimes for days or even weeks after a fire. Put water on it for hours, but what we learned every time that we've done that, five hours later, we put it on a tow truck, try to get it away. When it gets to the tow yard, it reignites. And then we're back putting more water on it. Uh, we were also putting them in Connex boxes with sand and water. The other hard thing about that is even after you pull it out after a couple weeks, they would still reignite. So it, it still didn't extinguish the problem. A new method recently developed in Europe is currently also gaining ground in the U.S where high pressure cutting lamps is used to puncture the lithium iron battery casing, dispersing water mist inside the battery cells through a small hole. Correctly used and with proper training, this method can stop the propagation, which in turn contributes to faster handling of the situation while using minimal amounts of water. The following video features lessons learned from a use case in Tempe, Arizona, where a trained crew used the method on the live EV fire for the first time. It's a shame because we don't want to see anybody's property ruined, but we had a Tesla catch fire that we were able to go out and utilize this tool. We learned from it. It wasn't the, the greatest deployment of it because it was the very first time we had done it, but we learned and we were able to extinguish the fire. And one of the, the greatest things that I take away from that too is it didn't make the news. I believe it was on June 5th. We, uh, had a dispatch for a vehicle fire involving an electric vehicle. We had recently uh, gone through the instruction portions for the cold cut Cobra, so command on the scene decided that they wanted to deploy the Cobra, so we started setting up for that operation. Um, there were some fires shooting out from the bottom with some white smoke, um, which is kind of a telltale sign of a, a battery compartment fire. They already had protection line in place, flowing a lot of water. Um, we got there, got our lines in place, and then started our attack. We approached the vehicle from the upwind side to try and stay out of as much of the smoke as possible, which is on the uh, passenger side. It had electronic uh, door handles and stuff on it that we could not get to operate. We tried the manual overrides, couldn't get those to operate either, so we had to mechanically have one of our ladder trucks actually extricate the doors. It took us a little bit of time to get into the correct battery compartment. From that point forward, we were able to start getting into the floorboard, pinpointing the fire on the floorboard using our thermal imaging camera. Once we're able to get majority of the hotspots put out, we can move to the driver's side. And once we got some fans in place, we can start doing more of a direct attack on the vehicle until we got some good steam conversion uh, to look at, knowing that we're in the right spot. What we're actually doing is there's a little abrasive in there that it will penetrate into that battery compartment, creating about a BB size hole into there where we can actually inject water into where that thermal runaway is going on inside that actual battery cell, which is cooling that cell down, down below a, a level of temperature where it's no longer in that thermal runaway. Once we got it extinguished, we probably only flowed maybe 120, maybe 120 gallons, if that. Probably all in all time from working the lance to getting the fire out all together, um, if we didn't have the hurdles, would have probably been less than 20 minutes. So for EV fires, it changes the tactics greatly. We do not have to put as many people in that toxic environment. We're able to keep the environment safe itself also by not utilizing uh, as much gallonage of water that we would normally as we're combating these fires. Once they've filled that compartment up with water, we can stop propagation and we can make sure that that fire is extinguished. And then we don't have reignition, which is something huge that you see with electric vehicle fires. We've learned how to deploy it a lot better. Uh, we've learned how to utilize our thermal image cameras to really figure out the hot spots. And then we, we also learned with one person deploying it and 
piercing that battery pack. If they stay for longer, we'll make sure that that thing is out. For our type of thermal imaging camera, it's hard to see through seats and floorboard. So it's actually better to, if you can get one side of that car elevated and you can go direct into the battery compartment and you get a little bit better of an angle because it is hard to come from the top. The way our tow companies load vehicles here is they'll tilt them up by the front. In the process of doing that, a lot of the water that we had introduced into that battery pack drained out. Once the vehicle was on the back of the operator's truck and it started to smoke, he did not want it on his truck anymore, so he dropped it instantly. We were able to get our um, Cobra out deployed and we were able to put it out in probably two minutes from the time we had it deployed and less than 20 gallons of water the second time. In our instance, it was just a standard tow company. It wasn't a specialized company that was necessarily equipped or trained to handle EV vehicles um, post fire like this. So, so once we had the second tow company come out on our incident, they were able to cover it with a fire blanket, put it in a Connex box and, and secure it and properly transport it without any further incident. Every Tesla fire that has happened out here in the last couple of years has made the news because of how long it takes to extinguish. They continuously reignite. Nobody knew about this one except for the people that we told and the videos that we have to show that, hey, this works on an electric vehicle. So that's one of the biggest reasons we really like this tool because it will help in the long run for firefighter safety as well as civilian safety as we're trying to extinguish fires.